sketched it out, sent me a rendering. I'm like, yes, I love it. I love it. You know, just, I mean, Star Spangled Banner, America. I don't know a lot about things. I don't know a lot about life. Never claimed to. You know, I, I've been a really lucky guy, but there's one thing that I call that I pride myself on. I mean, I've been wrong about so many things in my life, but that one thing that I got right. Maybe a few years back, you may remember, but I was talking about the top 10 cars to buy now because they're going to be worth money soon. And I said, OBS trucks. And there was people in the comments, oh, you're crazy, ain't nobody gonna buy those pop-up trucks, those 90s trucks, that's silly, that's silly. Ha ha, they have gone insane. And now keep in mind, since that video, I've probably owned 100 OBS trucks. Sometimes I do get accused of, of controlling the market a little bit, but hey, whatever. But this is the thing, I have owned all these trucks and it's so weird how the world is changing. You know, I did a story on here. I bought a truck and a guy couldn't sell it because it had this guy's like body shot name on the side of it. And I sold it like six hours after we took this crap off the side of it. Now, we've been doing some fun stuff in the shop. You know, like certain things come in, they need a little, mm. I mean, it's not a bad truck. It just needs some personality, like something to, you know, kind of like staging a house. You know what I mean? Because people can't visualize what it could be like. And you know, it may not exactly be your cup of tea, but we can, you know, maybe give you an idea of what you could do with this. You know, because a lot of these things are blank canvases and you can put your touches on them to make them yours. So we started doing some theme trucks. You know, not quite as crazy as Orange County Choppers or any of those guys, but like, we'll have fun with it. And the very first one was really cool. I actually bought an OBS truck and the guy was a truck driver for Evil Knievel. So that gave me the idea for it. This clean white OBS. Bought out of Rocky Hill, South Carolina, out of a trailer park. The truck was immaculate, but it was just a white Chevrolet truck. Seen one, you seen them all. I mean, it's probably the nicest white Chevrolet truck. But at the end of the day, it just mixes in with the rest of the crowd. And it's kind of a cool story. You know, guy that drove a truck for, you know, probably one of the many guys that drove a truck for Evil Knievel. But, you know, it's kind of a fun story. But at the end of the day, in pictures, my white OBS looks just like this guy's white OBS and this white OBS and whatever. So how do you stick out? You know, you gotta think about it. These trucks are red hot, you know, and, and, and you know, there's so many red ones and white ones and black ones and teal green ones and whatever. How do you stand out? And it hit me. We're gonna make this the Evil Knievel truck. So we strap it all up. I call my buddy Travis Bell, said, Travis Bell, you got them Evil Knievel tags? Literally, as soon as I hung the phone up, the UPS man was showing up at my place. I still haven't figured out how he does this shit. He's got like a magical wormhole between Indianapolis and Greenville, South Carolina makes things, it's like Prime could take notes from Travis Bell. I'm just throwing that out there. Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, y'all both got the same haircut, but he's got you on delivery all day. Moving on, I got these plates and that's like, like that was my start. You know, red, white, and blue, you know, got my graphic guy, best graphic designer in the country. Told him what I wanted to do, literally sketched it out, sent me a rendering, I'm like, yes! I love it, I love it. You know, just, I mean, Star Spangled Banner, America. Metal flake blue, metal flake red over a gorgeous white Chevrolet truck. I mean, literally, this is a Lee Greenwood song in the making. I mean, this truck's gorgeous, lowered on billet wheels. Got those beautiful stripes, and of course, that classic Evil Knievel logo. Gold leaf on the sides. This thing is absolutely show-stopping gorgeous. We stick it online. Literally sold in eight hours and ended up going to Butte, Montana, the home of Evil Knievel, which is kind of like, you know, an Elvis car going back to Graceland. You know, I mean, that's that's, that's awesome. And, and I've got fans that watch the channel that have sent me pictures of the Evil truck riding around in Montana. Like, it is so neat that, that it's something that we created out of basically thin air is you know like the coolest thing around and now it's been and you get a few there's been a few more evil trucks pop up you know you're, whenever you have a good idea somebody's gonna duplicate it but you know that got me thinking about some of these theme trucks you know and i got a great graphic designer you know and, and, and i buy a lot of vehicles you got to think about it. i sell over 100 a year by myself another funny one we bought i bought a 64 c10 truck it was maroon it had disc brakes it had a small block chevrolet in it there's a little play i bought this truck for nothing I mean, like, literally, it was a steal of a deal. 
little rough around the edges, kind of a patina truck a little bit, but 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 nice, but it wasn't lowered, it just had truck rallies on it. It was a great little truck. And I thought, you know, we were kind of busy, the shop was kind of backed up a little bit. Like the truck needed something. It was just maroon, it was just blah. You know, just dead maroon paint. You know, it had a white top. And and I'm like, what can we do with this thing? You know, what can we do with this thing? You know, and I'm like, you know, so my shop finally cleared out a little bit. So we sent a shop, big wheels, we didn't put air ride on it. You know, just, just kind of made it cool. But we got it done, and it's just, yeah, it's kind of like every other second gen C10. You know, it's all right. You know, it's not a show truck by any chance. It's just a little petite truck. I'm like, what can we do? And I started thinking, like, you know, we could do a theme with this. And that got me thinking. And I was watching the news. They were talking about the very first insane asylum in the state of South Carolina, burning to the ground. Been closed for years, but the building actually burned to the ground on Bull Street in Columbia, South Carolina. You know, of course, Carolina Gamecocks, all that's in Columbia. Trucks maroon, that works. So I call my, I got a, a good friend of mine, he passed away now, a really good friend of mine who did hand lettering, you know, and uh, no stickers, all paint. And I told him what I wanted to do, and I wanted to mimic these logos. And of course, we found the logos online. I wanted to look like this. You know, put your spin on it. We did... This truck, we called it the Psycho C10, but we lettered it for the South Carolina Mental Institution. And it had been around since 1865. And even across the back of the tailgates, it's serving the mentally ill since 1865. And it was, we made it look like a landscaper truck for the, for, the, for the mental institution. That truck didn't even get done. He was painting the one side, he was done. And I popped a picture of it on Instagram in my story. The other side wasn't even painted yet. And I sold it. I mean, like, they, they fall in love with it. I'm like, man, I'm two for two on these theme trucks. Got me thinking again. So, you know, and this is what you do like with problem children trucks. You know, things you just can't get rid of. So, moving forward, had a good friend of mine. He had a blue Chevrolet truck, just a blue OBS. They hauled trash in it. He goes, man, I've had this thing for sale on Marketplace for six months. And then not even got a reply. And, I mean, the truck ran good. It was rough, dead paint. and needed everything. The interior looked like a... Wild Bearcat had been locked in it for six months. But it was just a good, solid old truck, but nobody wanted it. So what did we do? We lowered it, put a big set of wheels on it. We lettered it up. Crane Chevrolet, the oldest Chevrolet dealership in the state of South Carolina. Parts delivery truck for Crane Chevrolet. Sold it in two days. And that truck, now, I sold it to a guy in Georgia here, and it actually ended up, I think it's in like Alabama now. Like, I mean, like these things are floating around. And another funny story, this is kind of a little more recent, we had one, and it was kind of funny. I bought five vehicles from one guy, and he had this one OBS truck that was just, it was cute, lower down set of wheels, but it got thrown in on the deal. Like, it was one of those things, like, you got to buy them all. I would not have never really seek this vehicle out. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, I just figured I'd end up making a shop truck out of it. You know, just let guys run Home Depot in it or something. And my rep guy saw it. He goes, dude, we can make this cool. I mean, like, scorch paint, you know, I mean, literally just got the surface rust on the roof. Dents and dings all in, literally rougher than a night in jail. And he lettered it up like an old phone company truck with you know, patina the stripes and everything. And it looked like those stripes had been on there for 30 years when they hadn't been on there 30 minutes. We literally posted a TikTok of him rapping it and it went viral. And then next thing you know, we stuck it on Marketplace. It sold in five hours. It went to Illinois. There's somebody riding around in Illinois with Southern Bell on the side of a pickup truck. We called it Speed Dial. Gave it a funny little name. But it just goes to show you, like, it's so crazy. I used to take things off of trucks to sell them, and now I put names back on them. Hey, you know what? I don't know the market. I just know what sells. Rinse and repeat. When you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, it's more important than ever to fight every one. And the perfect partner in that fight is the Ticket Clinic. When you get a ticket, you're facing costly insurance, premium increases, points on your license, fines, risk of suspension, jail time, and they can help you avoid all of that. They've got offices in Florida and in California, but they can help you fight a ticket through their network of attorneys no matter where in the United States you get one. You can text a picture of your ticket to 305305, or you can check them out now at the link in the description below. So thank them for their support of Venwiki, of Car Trek, and fight your ticket with the Ticket Clinic.